Welcome back, everybody, to Chicago White Sox franchise. We are back, ready to go here on MLB The Show 24. We are gearing up and ready for the MLB draft here today. Now, we do have some slight changes, if you guys may recall, or if you know if you're somebody that's watching this on the playlist. Yeah, I ended up like missing like the last two weeks. I forgot to end up in the save file at the end of the video, so. Got the record back to what it was, so we should be good there. Not sure about other teams, and you know, look into all that enough, but yeah, this is going to be the final week of scouting that we have to end up doing, and we're gonna hop into this MLB draft here. So, hopefully, things go well. Um, right now, we have Alexi Felice up here as a catcher, we'll get him fully scouted out, and then we have uh, I guess a guy we ended up discovering here in Nikki Hogue. So, maybe uh, actually, you no, know, let me let me take Nikki off. Okay, yeah, I just realized this thing is pretty close to the pretty close with his potential and whatnot. So, I'll try and find somebody else. All right, we got a guy, he's considered not ranked, but potential wise, 74 to 93 overall is going to be between 55 and 74. He's on the older side, he's 22 years old here, but. Solid hits per nine looks like possibly coming in. Good pitch velocity and break. Four seamer can looks like gets up there to about 97. Change a curveball and a slurve too. So left-handed batter here. Like I said, he's up there in age 22, but you know that's not a problem there. Let's see what Matt Nadeau ends up being out when uh, we get to the to the draft stuff here. But we're gonna finalize our scouting. Hopefully, maybe find another discovery here. But we got the Miami Marlins here, and looks like we have a situation here. Bottom of the ninth, one out. Christian Bethencourt trying to walk it off here for the Marlins. Let's hop in here and see if we can get a series win. Got a fly ball. Luis Robert coming on quickly. Not able to get there in time. They are going to hold up everybody. Great throw out of there from center field. My gosh. But Bethencourt gets a blooper to get in there. And, ooh, pumping the fastball at 95. Right by him. Pretty sure he was late on that. Runners in scoring position. He's batting 167. And well, he may have just didn't need the base hit, but he is going to get a sack fly. And we'll go ahead and cut that one off. I thought it was a. Uh, I didn't realize there were two score games. So I guess it really didn't matter too much. We just need to get. It. And now, and it's the former White Sox, Tim Anderson. Trying to find a way to tie this one up or potentially walk it off here. The 0 2 to Tim Anderson. Down to the final strike, potentially he's gonna bloot this one. Nicky Lopez has got it in shallow. Right center field, and the Sox will take the series here today. Let's go, boys. That a way to get the job done. Gave up a run, but it's all good. Moncana, a three for four day, trying to bump up that trade stock with the player of the game. Aloy, two for four. Roll Bear, one for three. Not bad. And yes, I know I've been saying Luis Robert for Luis Robert. Honestly, I I literally been pronouncing it wrong because anytime I'm watching the White Sox games, like over the years, I said they kept calling him that. And, it, and, I, and like initially, I'm like, he comes from Cuba, like they don't pronounce it Robert, but they made the the English translation for it, and it just kind of it's just for whatever reason stuck in my head. So it made that a complete mess. But here we go, bottom of the eighth, two outs here, bases loaded, Martin Maldonado up to bat. Unfortunately, there's two outs right now, but. Hey, what can you do? Do better than the bottom of the ninth, though, too. I feel like we always come into a situation that's not with one of our, I guess, better batters. I feel like Maldonado has been a guy that we kind of constantly, like, you have to use. You know what? We just went down on three pitches. My goodness. <sighs> I'm trying to get to the draft, man. We ain't finishing this out. Yeah, we do end up getting the win. Looks like Luis Robert gets played the game. Maybe hit a walk-off home run right there to end it. Makes sense. He had two RBIs on the day. Lloyd Jimenez, two for four. All right, we got crochets on the man versus the Pirates. I don't care. We're getting to this draft right now. Ended up getting the job done. So, a couple game win streak here. We got somebody in the Futures game. That's got it. I'm, hmm. Actually, I'm not sure who that might be. Jose Montgomery's here in this game. Wow. Huh. Who would have thought he actually would have made it? Five home runs, batting 224. Good for Colson. Drew Thorpe is also here. Wow, so we got a few guys that end up making this thing. Not bad at all. You love to see it. Thorpe really trying to find a way to bounce back after a little bit of a slow start. He already down to a 272. Whip is higher than what we would like, but he's turning things around. That's exactly what you want to see. All right, like I said, we're trying to get to the draft. I, I would play that maybe on a normal year, but right now this year, 
we're trying to get through all this. And no, uh, we want to do this. Like, come on, y'all. Get out of here. End up getting a job done over the pirates. You love to see it. And I believe just one sim through. And yep, here we go. We got the draft, everybody. Let's see what ends up happening. Who will be the future of the Chicago White Sox rebuild? I'm excited to see who ends up going, you know, here early on and whatnot. Because, sweet G's. It's going to be interesting. All right, everybody. The draft board is set. We're going to see who ends up being the future here in Chicago. Let's see what our rivals, the Guardians, decide to do with their very first pick here. And they're going to go with Ramon Salazar, a starting pitcher. We have fourth on our board. It's like potential-wise, he's going to be pretty solid. He's in, he is on the older side. Older side. He's a, a lefty, but it's likely going to be B to maybe low A potential. Seems like that's going to end up being the case for him. And Jared Fernandez ends up going to the Cincinnati Reds. This is the guy I really wanted. Unfortunately, it does not look like it's going to end up working out that way. And the third pick would be Johnny Washington. Another guy who was highly like rated. He was number one technically on the team draft rank. Although, the difference is with him, I wasn't, like, big. And his speed really wasn't anything for Johnny. That was kind of my big knock. I mean, his 84, 89 slider, then two-seamer maybe gets up to a 93. But really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Sean Grosleski ends up going out. Wow, another first baseman ends up going high. So, unfortunately, Jared was going to be probably the guy I ended up with. Unfortunately, he is going to end up being gone. So, that does suck. Looks like he was the draft rank number one. Was hoping he found a way to us. Fortunately, we are going to have to go with our next decision here, and I believe it's going to be Andrew Vernon. Looks like a very solid pitching prospect. His hits per nine and strikeout might be on the lower end than what I would like. He's going to come in with a four seamer curveball changeup and a two seamer, but he still look at the end of the day just looks pretty damn solid. Now, we have some other guys on here that, you know, might be at a fine later. We'll have to end up seeing. Like, Bruno Valencia is probably going to be gone by the time we come around. But he still looks solid as well. He is kind of on a short end, maybe for some pitchers. Um, we also have Adrian De Los Santos down here as well. Four-seam with slider, curveball, and a sinker. Honestly, I kind of feel like they may be a little bit comparable. Adrian and um, Vernon. See if we can kind of go back and forth between them. Looks like maybe better stamina and like the hits and strikeouts per nine. Walks per nine is pretty solid better. Adrian maybe had better with home runs and control, velocity, and break and all that stuff might be a little bit better at the end of the day. But yeah, I think I think we're gonna go end up with Andrew Vernon here though. We're gonna go ahead and make the move. Get another starting pitcher here of the future and Hopefully this ends up working out. Because honestly, I don't think this was anything crazy of a draft class, man. It really wasn't anything like over exciting and whatnot. So we'll see. Hopefully Andrew ends up being the correct call here. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go after Jared Fernandez, man. He wasn't even available by the time we got there. So Reds end up taking our guy. And Shane Barry, who we actually did have on our board, ends up going. Kind of surprised. Uh, maybe, no, maybe not. The draft rank was six, so he ends up going six. We had him team rank. But potential wise, I think he's, it's probably just going to end up being a flat out C. Like, it's the same as his overall. So, I don't know how that's going to end up shaking out. Um, maybe that's the Salvador Perez replacement there. If you're Blanco, I believe that was another guy we had on our board. We had him ranked 75th, 13th ranked here, though. So, catchers end up going down, looks like. Um, Alexi Feliz might be a guy we find later. Have to see, you know, we definitely need to be able to get a batter here at some point. Can't just be all pitching prospects, even though we do need a pretty big pitching overall. All right, time for round number two here. And honestly, I've just kind of been watching all this kind of go down. Adrian De Los Santos is still hanging around here. Like I said um, earlier, well, I don't know if I don't recall if I went into him or not, but his per nine and strikeout per nine, maybe nothing crazy. But he looks like he's going to be a pretty solid pitcher. Only knock is maybe, I mean, he's still got a, a wide range between his potential. So, I mean, we know at minimum he's probably going to be a C, which is not maybe what we want to aim for in the second round. Um, we also have Alexi Feliz. We would think he'll still be here by the time we pick again here. 
and uh, actually you prospect there. So we got 42 and 67. So we got a few guys here that should still be around for our next few picks. So I feel like you know a guy who had like kind of a first round grade to him. I feel like I mean he looks pretty damn decent, man. But ends up busting out. Hey, you know we're, we're gonna run into him, I'm trying to draft as best as I can here, but. I think we're going to pull the trigger here on Adrian De Los Santos, and hopefully he is part of this long list of, of pitchers that we got coming up, man. You know, we got Drew Thorpe, got Noah Schultz down there, and then we got two um, two pitchers here that we ended up drafting. So hopefully they end up being in our favor. All right, so we do have a couple guys end up going. Manuel Franco ends up with the Philadelphia Phillies there, and Walter Bliss ends up in Baltimore. So... Couple guys taking off the board, all good there. I think we're just gonna kind of stick with it. Alexi Feliz will bring him on. He looks like he's gonna be a very just good hitter. Just solid contact. I know he's 21, but honestly, I don't think we're gonna go wrong with this dude. He's looking like he's more than likely gonna end up being a B potential at minimum. I mean, they, they well, I guess at minimum he could be a high C potential, but I think he's gonna fall in there pretty decently. Might be on the lower end on the overall scale, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um. Arm strength, decent, nothing crazy, but I believe this is the route we're going to go. We could use another future catcher on the roster here. I know we got Edgar Quiero down there, but we got to start getting some guys in here too, though, that can make them do some things. So, welcome to the squad, Alexi Feliz. All right, well, right before, it was one of our guys we had on the board as well. Rodney Sanchez ends up going, but I believe we're going to stick with our thing. Once again, we're going to end up getting another batter here. Ollie Vasquez is a guy we have on the board. Now, this one's a little concerning, maybe more of a project, you know, despite him being 22. Probably maybe in that 60 range, maybe good B potential, another one, but it looks like it's going to be just a good power hitter. Decent fielder as well out there in right field, so I'm going to take the chance on only Vasquez here. You know, it really wasn't a crazy, like, class, though, when it came to, like, the bats. It really wasn't. And honestly, in general, this really didn't feel like a crazy class all the way around, so... We'll see what ends up happening for us, though. Ali Vasquez, though, welcome to the squad. All right, so this is the last guy we actually have on our board. Um, I'm honestly not sure how you pronounce his name. Maybe Siyoshi Oka? Aka, maybe? But looks like he's another guy that's going to be pretty solid. Very good velocity coming in here. Fastball can peak at look like 99. Coming also with a slider, changeup, and a sinker that also has quite a bit of movement to it as well. So excited to see what he is. Um... The walks and home runs might be on the more concerning end, but looks like he's going to be pretty solid. You know, potential-wise, could end up being in that B category. Maybe it's a C. Unfortunately, we didn't get him fully scouted out, so it's the only thing I wish we may have been able to get done, but hopefully he ends up working out for us, and, you know, he's one of the guys we ended up discovering, so let's we'll see if we can find anybody else on our list that, you know, we're actually kind of interested in. All right, we're going to take a fly on the guy, Steven Yu. Out of South Korea. It doesn't look like anything crazy. Maybe with the power numbers. Could be a solid contact hitter in vision. Uh, maybe nothing crazy in the field either. But like I said, we're, we're just kind of taking flyers on some people at this point. Because really we don't have really a choice. Because we don't have that many people scouted out. All right, final guy of our draft. We're going to go with Omar Silva. Not sure who will still be here at this time. But yeah, we're going to end up going with him. And... Quite a bit of pitchers we ended up drafting here. We also took some, maybe some older guys. Definitely would like maybe more 18 year olds here, but all good here. And that's going to do it for our first year player draft here with the Chicago White Sox. Here in a little bit, we'll be able to take a look at everything here. And we got some injuries we got to deal with, with apparently minor leaguers. But Brewers are offering us a trade. John Barevia, Tyler Black. Shortstop, actually, well, not bad. Doesn't really have the numbers, maybe, that we want. He's already at current service time, so. We decline that for now. Like I said, we, I know we got some things we're going to, yeah, draft picks and sign. I know we got some things, you know, we want to look at here and figure out, but. For now, priority, sign these draft picks. No, but uh, what I was saying, though. I know we got some guys, you know, we're going to be end up moving off of and honestly probably need to start setting that trade block so we can get an understanding of what. You know, what offers we might end up being getting out of here. And even take a look at the trade block to see if we can find maybe even some hidden gems there. Or, you know, maybe see somebody that catches our eye. But for now, let's see if we can sign our draft picks. Andrew Vernon, our first round pick here. See if we can go ahead and 
get him offered up here, see what he's end up. So slotted value 7.14, my gosh. And he's gonna end up declining, all right then. All right, fine, first round pick, wanna be a little stingy, I get it. All right, let's see what Adrian is about. Let's see if he ends up taking it. Oh, why is that way up here? Oh, that's his interest level, okay. All right, well, look, we'll offer what he's asking for, and yeah, he's gonna take it, cool. Let's see what Omar Silva's talking about. He's declining, all right, Omar. Six round pick, not having it. All right, Aka, he signs on the dotted line. Alexi Feliz, another second round pick for us. Let's see if he gets on that dotted line. Yes, sir. All right, nothing from Ollie Vasquez. He was being a little pain as well. We'll go with Steven Yu. All right, well, we got three guys that didn't want to sign on the dotted line. All good. We'll hopefully get these guys signed here pretty quickly. You don't have to wait too much longer. Wait as we get to similar some of these. Like I said, man, I'm not really worried about you guys right now. Actually, I need to even start focusing on getting guys on this trade block. But I was wondering who represented us. It was actually Paul DeYoung who actually ended up making, I guess, represent us for our All-Star team. And honestly, not exactly sure why. He's not really doing that well. But that was who ended up making it. <laughs> All right, let's see if our first round pick is going to sign. And he will, Andrew Vernon. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, let's see if Ollie Vasquez is going to go ahead and sign on the dotted line this go around. I right, got Ollie done and Omar Silva, the last one for, to finish up the draft class. He's still been a little bit of pain, even though his interest is at a 76. Not sure what he's tripping about, but all right. Um, like I said, I know we need to get some guys, you know, looked at here. So we're on the trade block. So let's get an understanding and see what we're going to end up doing there. All right, so we have our trading block updated. Mike Clevenger has been added to it. Tommy Pham, Gavin Sheets, Aloy Jimenez, Joan Moncada, and Paul DeYoung. Now, I, haven't, I didn't put Robert on the trade block just because if we're going to move off of him, I'm probably going to have to manually trade it and look for somebody. So if we take a look here, nothing crazy so far. There was kind of one big name that ended up popping out. And these guys might actually start getting on, like, maybe trade block here later on. Well, I guess Tristan McKenzie is a pretty big name, but I'm not exactly sure why he is on the trade block. But Jazz Chisholm was probably the biggest name that I ended up seeing here on the trade block. Oh boy, Tanner Scott is here as well. Let's get Trevor Rogers down here. Woo, Trevor's really having off here. I understand why. We're not gonna move, make the move for Jazz though. I mean, granted, yes, it'd be nice to be a pretty good swap. You have to get paid maybe a little bit less, but I imagine that, you know, we're not a contender, so we're not really gonna be after him. Um, we got to see some of our old boys here. Lane Thomas is on that block. He's having an awful year, man. I thought he had a bad year with us that first year, but man, he's really doing bad. This is interesting here. We got Pete Crow Armstrong. It's like the top prospect in the Cubs system. Not exactly sure why he's here. Maybe they just trying to get rid of him. Maybe they want somebody else. Maybe a more reliable person in the center field there. I'm curious what they are even asking for out of this. She's my kind of into young. Yeah, all the guys got on the trade box. I guess those are the guys that they're going after first. Aloy as well, so. Okay, that one we might maybe consider to come back to down the line here. See what, you know, we all getting trade scenarios here, but. So, with the trade block updated, we will see what all we can get. Robert's got a 10 game hitting streak. We'll see what ends up coming in, though. Once again, man, you guys are giving us stuff we do not care about. Yeah, you know, one last draft pick to sign still, so hopefully, Omar. It's not being a pain, and there we go. The full draft class is signed. Nobody else to find. And trade talks, you know, they, they're quiet right now. Hey, okay, here go the Nationals. Nixon Zell for Paul DeYoung. Uh, I'm not that interested in it, to be honest. I mean, if anything, I want my boy Brady House back. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm good. What, what? Oh, well, you can't even take this off, so... <laughs> But, uh, the young for Senzel, who's right now cold, and we had Senzel, I mean, Senzel can pretty much play everywhere. That second year with Senzel, though, it was pretty bad. Uh, we're going to pass on that right now. Hopefully, maybe there's something better that ends up coming down. I'm tired of these situations coming in. I know you guys might want to see it. Right now, I'm not dealing with them right at the moment. Don't have draft picks anymore. We've got the Phillies offering a, a trade with Merrifield. How old is Whit now? Hey, what's 35? This is a salary dump. They want Gavin Sheets. Like, y'all coming at us with this stuff? Come on, man. At least give us some prospects in return. I mean, Gavin Sheets still a B, 27-year-old. Solid power hitter versus righties. Like, 
Did we get something a little bit better? God, come on now. We're getting off from the Cubs. Patrick Wisdom, the third baseman. 32-year-old Wisdom. A lot of power right there. Kind of coming onto the scene as an older guy, but having a struggling season, looks like. Well, he's got 21 home runs. Hell, he's on pace for his career high in home runs. I see why they would be interested in getting rid of Tommy Pham there, but... Honestly, it wouldn't be a bad idea. We don't really have a future third baseman at the moment. Moncada's likely going to be getting moved off of because he's got a high, what's going call it? He's got a high contract. Damn, I mean, it does expire here soon, but you know what? Let's, let's see if we can work something out here. Sox and Cubs have done some deals in the past. Maybe not too many, but the most familiar one is definitely the Jose Quintana for Aloy Jimenez and Dylan Cease, which... Clearly didn't end up working out really for either ball club. Both of them lost the deal. Now, we also saw Pete Crow Armstrong was on their list for whatever reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but he was on their list as well for the um, trade block. So, well, we're going to try and see if maybe we can find a way to move him and maybe get him in wisdom here in this deal. Got my boy Robert. Now, we're not sending Robert off for them, but he is showing he's on fire right now, which only had 11 home runs on the year, so nothing crazy. They're looking for a catcher, closing pitcher, shortstop. Throw in Paul DeYoung, but it looks like they don't really want much with him. Yeah, sounds like they want Jacob Gonzalez instead. So I don't get the trade logic of this game. I'm trying to keep some stuff fair, but hey, this is once again where, you know what? <laughs> I guess you could say we're gaming the system a little bit. I mean, they were interested in Tommy Pham in any way for Patrick Wisdom. And Pete Crow Armstrong, they were also willingly ready to get rid of for whatever reason, so... Well, like they wouldn't be likely getting rid of their top prospect here, even though despite he might be off to a little struggling start here. But, hey, you know what, Cubs, y'all going to do the trade? Guess what? We're going to do the trade. He's a left-handed batter at that. More of a guy, you know, with good fielding and speed and maybe a contact guy. But maybe we can develop that power a little bit here. So, hopefully things end up working. But a cross-town trade is done yet again between the White Sox and the Cubs. Let's lock it in. They're going to end up doing the deal there. We'll take it. Ooh, Bellinger's on the engine list. Torn ACL. Wow. And still willing to get rid of the top prospect. Crazy. All right. Well, a couple guys have been removed now from the block. And now we still got a few more left here. And we'll see what we can end up doing. We do have interest from teams. So we'll see how this ends up shaking out. If they can give us something good. All right. So we've been working away here trying to figure out if we can get some deals. And um, came away with a few. So... We're probably not going to be able to trade off everybody that I would like to, but we still have the offseason, you know, to make some moves. I mean, we still got to be able to fill out a roster, too, because we still got guys that aren't even ready to come up yet. So here's trade number one. We're going to get off of Mike Clevenger here, send him to the Houston Astros for Jacob Melton, a left fielder, and Dylan Coleman, a relief pitcher. He's a 27-year-old, 95-mile-per-hour fastball, slurred cutter. Some decent action there. Uh, right now, he's actually not even in the majors. He hasn't played at all. He's been in AAA, and he's been dominating down there. So, for us, we can add, you know, a, maybe a nice younger bullpen arm. And then Jacob Melton, you know, some promise out of a left-handed batter. He is 23 years old, but no service time yet. So, you know, right now, he's doing pretty well down in AAA, batting 274 with nine home runs, 39 RBIs, OPS is 724. Not bad, you know, doing, doing his thing down there with 20 extra base hits total, almost 40 RBIs, so... Here's another deal that we will go ahead and get done. And let's go ahead and move on to the second one that we have lined up. All right, and the next one we have lined up here is Jacob Wilson, our third base. One of the top prospects in the organization for the A's here. Looks like he's going to be a you know, pretty decent fielder, good contact hitter. Maybe he ends up working on that power a little bit more there. But 22-year-old down in AAA right now, batting 245, OPS 701. Couple of home runs, eight doubles on the year. So not really known for the power, but like I said, you know, maybe solid contact hitter. And he's a third baseman. Now I know we did just end up making a deal for Patrick Wisdom, but Patrick Wisdom is 32, and who knows how much longer he'll, you know, he to keep going. I know their regression system is kind of odd. I think you have to hit like double digits. So Wisdom might be fine for a few years here, and we'll have to see how that ends up working out. But right now, you know, trying to get some pieces in place to see if we can get some youngsters in here. You never know. It's going to end up having Wisdom. He might not even want to resign with us either. So, but yeah, Dominic Fletcher right now really doesn't have a spot. We brought in Pete Crow Armstrong as well, and hopefully things end up working out in our favor here because Fletcher's not really batting that well anyway. So, yeah, we'll move on and. 
another deal for another prospect here and we got one more deal that we want to get done here and we're going into the division Raynell Delgado looks like he is going to be able to go for Paul DeYoung here and it looks like it's just gonna be a nice straight-up trade now Raynell he is down there in AAA right now it looks like another guy pretty solid contact and fielding Maybe he needs to get that vision, discipline, and clutch area up quite a bit. Especially the discipline is pretty bad. But I'd like to see him work on that. But he's doing pretty decently down there. He is 24, a little bit on the older side. But maybe we can find a way to work him up here at some point in the future. But he might not make that call up for a couple of years. I'm not trying to rush these guys either. So I'd like to, you know, maybe wait a little bit. But we do trade off our one all-star. And he really wasn't getting much luck. That was probably like the best that we were going to be getting out of it. So... Able to get some guys off the trade block, but right now we do only have a couple of players that are there now, and oh, and we'll see, you know, if we get anything good for Aloy, Gavin, and Moncada. I don't want to just give them up for you know cheap, but Gavin Sheets probably be, will be the one to move off just because his contract is up. Moncada and Aloy, if we need to, like Robert, we can move off of them in the offseason. It doesn't have to be done right now. Eesh, he's got a big injury here. Head fracture from Jake Woodford. I mean, the only thing I can think of is causing that is a baseball guy hit right back to him. Going to mess up with our lineups yet again, the pitching rotation, man. We are starting to get a lot of, quite a few people injured here lately, man. Like, we got a, we got a few people on this injury list that are going to be out for a while. But he's Woodford, not... Not good, not good, man. We're going to have to find a way to bring in somebody else here. And right now, literally, don't know if I want to bring up somebody. I wish we weren't having that great of a year, but. Triple A, maybe we can bring in Debbie Garcia up now. Looks like he's having a pretty decent, you know, he's 5-0 in Triple A. You know, he's having a decent year, 3.42 average. And why not, you know, start letting some of the younger guys go up here now, too, you know. So we're starting to deal off some people. Maybe this is the time, although this may not be the best, you know, scenario to bring him up in. Doesn't have maybe the greatest, like, stats-wise and pitch velocity and mix and whatnot. Uh, Jonathan Cannon, yeah, probably not coming up anytime soon, <laughs> if at all. So we got also a Chad Cool here as well. He has some time in the majors. And, you know, we could possibly, you know, ah, you know what, well, right, we'll give the young guy a shot. Why not? He's, he's having a decent AAA season. 3.42 ERA with a 1.14 whip. It's not terrible. Nothing crazy. He's undefeated down there. So, I mean, you know, he's had a little bit of stint in the majors. Had some okay opportunities and looks like some bad ones down in 2021 with the Orioles. So, I guess we'll see. We'll see what we have in Debbie Garcia. Because right now, we are kind of a little all over the place. Get him to the 40-man roster and get him going. Got a couple deals for Yohan Moncada. Been nothing crazy. We got another one for Whit Merrifield for Aloy Jimenez. And if Whit was maybe a decade, or yeah, like a 10 years younger, maybe. <laughs> but no, nah, we'll, we'll, we'll pass on the Whit Merrifield deal. And honestly, I think that could end up being like where this ends up at. Well, you know what? We haven't hopped in the game yet today. I know we've been focused on everything because I also want to be able to, you know, be the draft picks like. Let's see how they ended up doing, but why not hop into a game here real quick? Let's kind of break up all the simming. Yeah, I've been sitting here just straight up simming and looking at draft pick stuff, so. Let's see what we can do here. Luis Robert batting in the cleanup spot. We got a newly traded for man, Pete Crow Armstrong out there. He's at first base, the tying run. Let's see how this new look Sox team, well, kind of a new look Sox team is looking. John Schreiber might not want anything to do with Robert. It's a 2-1 count. Honestly, these pitches have not been that good either. And that one sent right back up the middle. And it's going to end up curving over there into right center field. And Pete Crow Armstrong will be sent back to third base. Thought about sending him, but that, was, that ball needed to get to the wall. And the winning run is in scoring position with Luis Robert. Coming up big, able to smoke that one out there into right center. Great job by the center fielder being able to cut that one off before it got to the wall out there. And here's Joan Moncada trying to up that trade stock. He is two for three on the day. And he'll hit a high fly ball out there. Deep right field. Back goes the left fielder. I said right field. That is my mistake. That throw is going to be oh boy, Robert is out. Crap, I wasn't even thinking about Robert tagging on that one. I was literally just thinking of the the guy on third base. Ah oh, crap. Oh, well, that's a double plus. That sucks. 
Maybe it'll be at the Andrew Vondo. Maybe it'll walk off home run. Nope, he's gonna shatter his bat to the first baseman. That shatter bat ended up going almost to the second baseman out there, actually, I should say. But we well, do tie the ball game. We'll see if they can end up maybe find a way to win this one in extras. No, but they just got one out with Michael Garcia over there. Now right, you know they're going. They're clearly trying to force us to come in here. So why not? Tanner Banks is on the mound for Salvador Perez. That pitch is a little too low. Back up the middle, and the Royals find a way to take the lead here. The top of the tenth. Salvador Perez, not fool. Not a good fastball at all out of Tanner. And that one back up the middle from Bobby Witt. So back-to-back -back singles for the Royals. They got something brewing here with two outs. Just flexing has entered the game now. He's got Pescantino in a one-two count trying to get out of this jam. And he's going to be fouled off here. Pascantino not going down easily. He's fouled off a few pitches here. Not chasing at the fastball. I guess he was able to see that one pretty well. Trying to avoid giving up three consecutive hits. And Nicky Lopez will have it and ends the top of the 10. They do get a run across. It's 4-3. Perez comes up big. All right, they're making this cover to the game. Ortega up to bat. We got runners on the corners. And that one smoked right back up the middle. Ortega coming through. And we're tied. All right, then. Okay, Ortega. Smoked that one right back where it came from at 98 miles an hour off the bat. And that will bring in Corey Lee here. You know what? We'll probably just drop a sack. Bunt. Why not? And that was going to end up working out to perfection. Corey Lee. Pretty good speed down that first baseline. Almost able to beat it out there. 2 1 count here to Nicky Lopez. He's trying to find a way to avoid a 0 for 4 day and possibly walk it off as he will just like that. It's a three strikeout performance for Nicky Lopez, and he'll come in and walk it off here in the bottom of the tenth. Let's go, boys. That's a way to get the comeback victory. Yes, sir. Good job, boys. Good job. At least Robert got to play the game in that one. Two for four with a home run and a double. So it's a nice extra base hits day for Luis. All right, well, we're going to see if we can still find something. They keep trying to pawn off Tyler Whittaker. It looks like we're not really getting anything that we're looking for. It's the final day for trade deadline. We'll see if we see anything that comes up for maybe somebody like Aloy Jimenez. See if there's any prospects that, you know, are worth potentially maybe. But so far, I haven't seen anything I liked, and I don't know if we're ever going to get anything. Well, sitting at 40 and 70. Don't think we really have a move for any of the other guys. I mean, there's some stuff that's there, but it's, just, it's nothing... Nothing that crazy. Honestly, the best bet of the guys that I saw was possibly, you know, for this prospect with the Diamondbacks, Tommy Troy. He's a shortstop. That's the only problem. I mean, he could play second or third base, which we kind of maybe filled that position with some potential prospects there. He can also play in the outfield there. So that could be a move. We could make that move maybe late in the all season. I don't know. Like I said, all season's still there if we want to make some deals. So it's not like we have to have everything solidified at this point here, but just order y'all go ahead and take care of that. Yeah, I actually ended up winning that one. How about that? And Pirates are giving us one last shot at a deal here on deadline day. Nick Gonzalez is already up here in the majors for Gavin Sheets. And currently a second base. Um we do have well no 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 no. Did we trade for a second base? Yeah. We did trade for one but he could end up being a problem. Mean, he's a project, so it's not a guarantee where at least Nick Gonzalez is up here in the majors already now. So, well, he's actually in AAA at the moment. And he's not doing the best down in AAA. It will give us, I guess, somebody to sit in the majors with Nicky Lopez, potentially. Hey, they also got G1 Bay here. That's the guy who we also had. Man, he was playing everywhere with the Nationals, too. Good speed. I kind of like the idea of G1 a little bit more, but this guy does maybe show a little bit more power. Maybe his vision and stuff is a little bit better than what G1 was offering, but what Gavin Sheets, this was kind of the guy I was looking to maybe potentially move anyway. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do the deal. Why not? And that will do it for the trade deadline. Here's come and pass. See what they're talking about down here with our minor leaguer Shane Drohan. Not too good. Nick Nastrini. Okay, DJ Gladney. Okay, had a pretty good July. 
And Rams before shutting it down. Although he only pitched six point two thirds. And Joe Barlow, the final one. So still got some guys here. You know, once again, couldn't get rid of everybody. Let us see that Drew Thorpe is on fire. Two point six eight ERA. Man, the dude is absolutely killing it now. One point two two whip. Once again, still a little bit higher than what we would like, but. Hopefully, eventually, that ends up coming down some. And with Schultz also down here dealing 2.42 ERA with 117 strikeouts. Or also with 117 strikeouts as well. So, these two youngsters, boy, they're, they're doing their thing down there. Right now, they are the hope and future of this starting rotation staff, man. Because right now, we really don't have much else going for us at all. But we could use a um, potential backup. Maybe here at first base here. Because... Outside of Andrew Vaughn, I don't know if anybody else really plays first base. Wisdom might, yeah. Okay, well, Wisdom can kind of rotate there. Still got Moncada lingering around here, but, yeah, you know, we'll get some things situated here, but got contract extensions. Definitely want to bring some, you know, get some people's stuff done and get everything, you know, situated here at some point. We'll do that here in today's video, but really right now, I'm just trying to get to, oh, okay, yeah, we can go draft picks. Okay, cool, so. This is what we were kind of waiting for. Let's see how good or bad we ended up doing. Andrew Vern is our very first pick of the White Sox franchise, and I'm hoping he is going to be a stud. What did we end up with? Okay. Okay. That's what we ended up with. We ended up with looks like an okay draft. Nothing crazy. Nothing blown out of the water. But Andrew Vernon did get the A potential. You love to see it. Yes, sir. Wow, look at the walks. Walks is a 77, boy. He could actually be somebody that ends up turning out pretty good. He's a 70 overall. Um, unfortunately, it looks like Adrian De Los Santos did end up becoming a C overall. Hopefully, he can work his way through some stuff. He is 18, 64 overall, though. Alexi Felix, 60 overall, 86 potential. We knew he'd probably be a good chance of being a B, but look at the hitting. Contact-wise and vision, discipline, clutch. Oh, that looks great. Fielding could use a little bit of work, and of course his power is pretty bad. I and mean, we need that going in his power. He wasn't a power hitter, so hopefully, you know, maybe he can turn some things around here. Um, looks like Ali Vasquez, another B potential prospect. Good power. Needs to work on his uh his contact though, and so does his vision and discipline and clutch. That all that's gotta find a way to get up. So hopefully it's not too bad. Um looks like Aka actually didn't turn out to really be anything crazy, unfortunately. I was hoping maybe we find a we stole something right here. We didn't have him fully scouted, so that's what it is. Steven Yu, we didn't even have a scouter at all. We just kind of took a shot in the dark there. And then we have Omar Silva, 6-2 overall, so a B potential with our last pick in the sixth round. That's not bad. Um, classes look maybe a little on the older side, though. I know our top guy is 18-year-old, and then we got a 21, 22-year-old. So, I mean, it's not, you know, overly crazy, but we kind of wish it was a little bit better. Take a look at the rest of everything. Boy, they didn't get, like, anybody signed. My goodness. What happened to Orioles? Uh, Walter Bliss was a guy I was considering. But he ended up going a lot higher than I believe I, th I thought he was going to end up going. I don't know if this is the second or third round. It doesn't actually say. But the Orioles ended up taking him. Looks like he's going to be a B potential high B at that. Um, center fielder Claudio Ruiz, a 92 overall. Or potential, excuse me. 49 overall, though. So that's going to be pretty tough for them to find a way to bring up. Mario Benitez, 90 potential right here. So he ended up being a season two overall. So we do have another A pitcher here in this staff. Okay, Beto, this was a guy I had on my list, was interested in seeing, but I kind of was a little hesitant. Mainly had him on there because of the high velocity. You got to see, he's got a 99 velocity. That thing's maxed out, but he only got three pitches. He's a B potential, 19 year old. So maybe nothing too crazy there. Uh, nothing out of here for the Blue Jays. Ramon Salazar ends up being an 89 potential, but the closing pitcher they got Luis Short. Or Lewis Short, excuse me. And maybe Short ended up fit because for a pitcher, I mean 5'10 is not not seen too often. So pretty decent class for them. Uh, Willie Ramos, 88 center fielder potential. Nothing really crap. Oh my gosh, but hey, hey, y'all didn't get nothing done, did you? Sheesh. Well, they were tripping though with the, uh, the twins, man. It didn't look like that good of a class anyway. We know Valencia, we did have on the list there. All in O. Honestly, this is not a guy I ended up seeing, but ends up being an A at a 57 overall. Dave Neely, this was a catch I had in mind, and my goodness, this dude is good. Good contact, good hitting, vision and clutch are pretty, well, vision's okay, but clutch is pretty solid for this age. 
Coast man got him on right there at that one. And oh my gosh, he he wasn't a generational talent, but he was. He may as well have been. He may not have been in that list, but Jared Fernandez is a star. Oh man, we missed out on one. I mean, well, we didn't take him out. This is who I wanted. He had him on number one on my board, but unfortunately, he ended up going way sooner. I mean, for a first baseman, I feel like to go second overall, I feel like that's not, you know, seen too often. Maybe I feel like, you know, maybe the shortstops and center, like maybe center fielders and one of the ones that typically go a little bit higher. But wow, yeah, that one, that one stings, man. It, it stings. Brad Feliz, this is a guy we had on our list too. He ends up being an A potential as well. But yeah, that Fernandez one, boys, that one's gonna sting, sting, sting. Johnny Washington ended up being a 95. He just really wasn't the type of pitcher that I kind of care for. Speed was a little bit slower than what I would like out of my guys. Oh, it's Duncan Lutwood. This actually guy was got a good power, but yeah, deep potential. He's gonna regress like crazy. We saw that when we were looking at our last uh, franchise with the Nationals, that first baseman you know drafting. So unfortunate we didn't get our guy, but you know it is what it is. You know things happen, but. That is where we'll bring this one to a close, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, I know we didn't really have much gameplay and much action in this one, but I just kind of wanted to get through everything and just get to that point. But next time out, we'll probably end up finishing up with the um, regular season. We'll probably hop into some minor league play, see how everybody is doing down there. So we didn't get to make some of the moves that we would like to, but like I said, we got the offseason to still make some moves, so we should be all good there. But that is where we're going to bring this to a close, everybody. I appreciate all the support you guys have shown the franchise series so far. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you thought on the trades and the draft. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with this series and more that will be coming out here with in the future. I'm out to next time, everybody. Hope you guys stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your week. God bless and peace. Close it out, future.